Boys and girls, big and small, welcome back to your favorite show on KNWT, Nerd Central, baby. Did you miss us? Of course you did. We missed you too. Well, while the world was kind of shut down for um, <laughs> unspecified reasons, you guys missed out on a lot of juicy news in the pop culture worlds. So now is the time for us to catch up when we kick it to the news. In the most recent of news, a couple of weeks ago, DC had their own virtual convention dedicated to announcements of their upcoming releases, known as the DC Fandom. Many eagerly things were shown off at this event, including, but not limited to, our very first look at the upcoming Suicide Squad film, introducing new and extraordinary comic book characters like... Polka Dot Man? That can't be real, right? Cody, is Polka Dot Man a real thing? You're kidding, right? Okay, I guess, yeah, Polka Dot Man is an actual big time Batman villain that we will be seeing on the big screen for the second time, if you include the Lego Batman movie. We also got a good look at the concept art for Dwayne Johnson's Black Adam film, where it appears he will be taking on the Justice Society of America. We have more information about the upcoming Flash film, where we found out there will be two Batman. You heard that right, both Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton will be reprising their roles as the caped crusader in the Scarlet Speedster's very first film. How confusing and exciting. And finally, the whole event ended with the money shot of one film in particular, our first trailer for The Batman. If you are a fan of this show, you know that we have followed the production of this film with great interest. And even though only 30% of the movie is actually filmed, one thing that is safe to say from this trailer is that many people are taking back their criticisms of Robert Pattinson as the Dark Knight. The hell are you supposed to be? I'm vengeance. There was one other thing that happened at DC Fandom, but I really don't want to bring it up at risk of triggering Cody. How about we go right into our first pack instead and experience our first dose of Sideburns with Kyle, followed by our newcomer Paige with B-Rated. Take it away, guys. Welcome to the first episode of Sideburns. I'm Kyle, and I'll be your host as we look at some of the greatest roasts and insults of cinema history. I'll be pitting two insults against each other, and we'll see who wins. I will be rating these quotes on my super duper awesomest, totally radical, bonkers, off the wall, totally tubular sideburnage chart. We've got actual insult, cleverness, inspiration, and total burnage of said roast. Now, today's episode, the mature content warning, because I will be taking you back to 2016 to the very first Deadpool movie. I know, I know. I'm setting the bar high, but trust me, it's one of my personal favorites. Shortly after Wade Wilson's transformation to the radiation burned pepperoni pizza that we all know and love today, he went to Sister Margaret's school for wayward girls to see his buddy Weasel. Here is where we get some of the best insults, which, may I add, are all ad-libbed. TJ Miller, who is also a stand comic, did this entire scene without any preparation. Up first is, and to quote him, because higher powers may smite me if I use the actual movie, you look like Freddy Krueger's face with the topographical map of Utah. First off, can we just admire how smooth Weasel is? I mean, come on, that line is pure, 100% uncut gold. For a first category, this gets a five out of five flames. I would be honored if TJ called me something like this. Coming up next in the category for cleverness, another five out of five. I'm not a fan of topography. I don't think anybody is. But also, Utah is not my favorite state. I can't think of one memorable thing from my time in Utah. But if we look at my handy dandy topographic map of the state, you can see the resemblance. And finally, we have inspiration. This is, this is also easy since TJ did this off the top of his head. Easy score, five out of five. Next up to bat, we have the insult, you look like an avocado had sex with an older, more disgusting avocado. There's more to this insult, but my editor, me, already hates me for the obsessive amount of bleeping he must do. For our first category, this insult gets a three out of five. Like the first, it really fits in with the scene. And have you seen a disgusting avocado? My point exactly. But I think you could do better than, sub, than a subpar vegetable in boinking. For cleverness, it's a five out of five. I mean, come on, I can't complain. If you pull insults out of thin air, 
and have it sting like that one, you're doing something right. For the last category inspiration, I'll also give this a five out of five since, like the first, it was ad-libbed. For total burnage, number one wins easily. While it was close in some regards, you can't beat the fact that number one is terrifyingly accurate. Once again, here's a map and weight for a comparison. Number one, we'll be moving on to the next round in the super duper awesome is totally radical bonkers off the wall, totally tubular burnage bracket, or as I like to call it, Sadat Rajwa. That's all the time I have for for today. Tune in next week where we're going to get fast and furious. Till next time, I'm Kyle. Stay burned. Hello and welcome to Be Rated, the segment of our show that reviews the best of the worst in cinema. I'm your host, Paige Jennings, and sitting in this week's hot seat is Hollow Tree Films' The Velocipaster. After simply hearing the title of this movie and looking at the cover, you can tell that this movie is really going to be something special. After losing his parents, a priest travels to China, where he inherits a mysterious ability that allows him to turn into a dinosaur. At first horrified by this new power, a prostitute convinces him to use it to fight crime and ninjas. Oh yeah, this will be good. Viewers on Amazon Prime gave this movie a whopping 4.4 out of 5 stars, and after watching it, I can't say I blame them. Going into this, I didn't have high expectations for the movie. The concept alone was enough to catch my attention, and while it was an entertaining idea, I wasn't expecting much. The acting was nothing impressive, but the dialogue was so simple and straightforward that I couldn't help but laugh. You had weird lines like, It's what parents do. They die on you. China is East. I don't think we can do anything for her now. She's too far gone. Not to mention the best characters were actually the side characters. It wasn't their lines or their acting that made them great. Instead, it was just the character that they played. They had so many little actions that simply made it all worthwhile. The plot, no matter how ridiculous it was, stayed on topic throughout the movie. It even had a twist that no one saw coming. But there was no foreshadowing to this twist whatsoever. And that's what made it both surprising and out of nowhere. The cinematography was so random that it was funny. To transition scenes, the camera would pan around to nothing important during a crossfade. Sometimes the camera would linger on a character for too long or zoom in too long, which just made things awkward. But the best part of this movie was without a doubt, the special effects. The special effects were so unrealistic and corny that they were nothing short of laughable. Whether the effects were meant to be cheesy or not, they really made the movie worth watching. Of course, we can't forget the star of this movie, the Velocipaster himself. It isn't until the final battle of the movie that we finally get to see the full dinosaur costume. And I must say, it was well worth the wait. It's great. Overall, this movie was a riot. My roommates and I were laughing the whole time, and while it's not a cinematic masterpiece, it was certainly worth the 70 minutes it took to watch it. With its corny lines, cheesy special effects, weird camera angles, and several other aspects that I didn't even get to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> the Velocipaster sure earned a special place in my heart. So when should you watch this movie? I recommend watching this movie with a group of friends or even a cute date. The more the merrier. It's certainly something that you can laugh at over and over again, and the jokes will never get old. This has been our review of The Velocipaster. Tune in to Nerd Central for next week's episode of B-Rated, where we review Killer Sofa. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll hit you with more juicy news. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Nerd Central, the summer lockdown catch-up edition. Now, one of the biggest pieces of news that we have from this summer is that many, many, many movie releases this summer and even most of this fall have been heavily delayed. And honestly, if I just listed them all off, then one, I would be very out of breath. And two, we would be here for like an hour. So, rather than subject you to that kind of torture, we have prepared this in memoriam. Enjoy.
So many films released too late. It breaks my little heart. <laughs> I guess it's time to talk about the thing I'm sure you all expected to be announced on this show. <sighs> For three years now, DC fans disappointed with the Justice League film have taken every opportunity they can to shout, release the Snyder Cut. Well, they're all going to have to subscribe to HBO Max in 2021. It's official, Zack Snyder's original vision for the Justice League film will be released in... Wait, this can't be right. Why is it so long? Okay, I guess the Snyder Cut will be released on HBO Max in four one-hour segments next year. I know at least one of us is excited right now. Let's check out our last two packs. First, we have Drew with Trash Flicks, and then making her dramatic return to Nerd Central, we have Emma with Nerd Games. Take it away. Hello, and welcome to Trash Flicks, the segment where I look through Netflix to find the worst of the worst. I'm Drew, and let's get right into it. This week, I'll be covering a notoriously bad movie, The Last Airbender, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. For those of you who don't know, The Last Airbender is an attempt at a live-action retelling of the first season of Avatar The Last Airbender, an animated kid show that aired on Nickelodeon. This movie follows Aang, Katara, and Sokka as they try to fight off the Fire Nation and try to do good along the way. The Last Airbender has many huge flaws that make the movie almost unwatchable. This isn't even bringing up its unfaithfulness to the original source material. The acting in this film is terrible. The lines are delivered in a way that makes the characters unlikable, and the characters act nothing like their animated counterparts. In this movie, Aang is almost unfeeling, and he reacts to things like a cardboard cutout. The casting itself is also seen as a major issue. The story takes place in a fictional world that is inspired by ancient China, but almost all of the main characters are white. It just doesn't make sense, so everyone looks out of place. The pacing of the movie is one of the largest issues overall. The film tries to shove an entire season's worth of content into a single movie, so the events seem rushed and the overall pacing is all over the place. One moment they're having a heartfelt conversation, and the other moment they're being attacked by the Fire Nation with absolutely no buildup. All of these issues are bad, but I feel the main reason this movie is so bad is the failure to be faithful to the source material. Constantly, there are things being changed for no reason. One example is that the characters' names are pronounced different for no reason at all. Aang becomes Ong, and Iroh was pronounced Iro. None of this makes any sense. Other inconsistencies are the characters' personalities. Instead of the characters being adventurous kids trying to save the world, they act like entitled brats who think they can have whatever they want. The biggest offense is Aang. In the show, Aang is a happy-go-lucky kid that is hesitant to fight anyone and will try to end things peacefully. His movie counterpart, however, is a stoic and almost heartless cutout that is willing to do anything to get what he wants, including berate and insult the people around him. All of these problems add up to a finished product that makes you think that the writers just got handed a synopsis of the story and threw it together for a quick buck. Everything feels half-baked, and the story is rushed so much it starts to not make sense at all. All these issues I talked about earlier make it one of the worst movies I've ever watched, and I'm not too hard to please. In conclusion, the movie's downfall can be attributed to the poor acting and casting, the unlikable characters, the flawed story adaptation, and the unfaithful adaptation of the characters' personalities, and the overall storyline. I went into this movie thinking it couldn't be as bad as everyone said, but leaving it... I've come to the conclusion that it may just be one of the worst movies ever. This was Drew, and thanks for watching Trash Flicks. What is up for you guys? My name is Emma, and Nerd Games is back. In case you forgot, this is how it works. Each week, I will have a new nerdy guest to play a new nerdy game. 
It's pretty self-explanatory. As you can see, I'm not in the studio this week. That's because I will be playing Bookshelf Scavenger Hunt. Me and my guests will each have one minute to find all the books on the list. Please help me welcome this week three special guests. My mom, Tracy, my sister, Lindsay, and my dad, Kyle, who will be off screen reading the clues. All right, let's go. 60 seconds on the clock. Ready? Go. Find a book with illustrations in it. It is a mom! No. Ah. Find a hardcover book with a jacket. <laughs> a book with a sport in it. A sport? No, I see. <laughs> That's... Any book that does not have a battle scene in it. Uh. <laughs> Any book with a tiara. <laughs> Any book featuring a girl with red hair. Red hair? What are you <laughs> Find an author, name, or title with the letter X. X! No! I don't you. Any book with a cover of a body part only. X! No, 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 no. A body part? Does that count? It's okay. Find a book that has a male protagonist. <laughs> A book that takes place in Europe. Europe, 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 wait! Oh, don't be ready, twice in Europe! Find a book that has a pet. <laughs> oh, wait! Oh, no, a pet! A pet! It's Christmas City, has a pet! Find a book with lightning on the front. Lightning! <laughs> Find a book with any aquatic scene on the front. a book with no less than 723 pages. <laughs> any, any book with some kind of bird on it. A bird! Uh, uh, Hunger Games! It's a bird! Any book that has someone wearing a cape. Any book with a bridge on the cover. I think your timer is not working. Is it? All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Join us next week for a new nerd game. <laughs> that was very funny. Thanks, guys. We're going to take another little break, but when we return, the boys with the best take will be here for Slightly Off. Hallelujah, am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I'm not the best take. I'm a quarter of the best take. That's probably an efficient amount of best take that you really need for this part. Um, I'm here because, well, let's be honest, there wasn't any movie stuff to talk about for best take. Everything's canceled. I mean, even if there was movie stuff, we can't go. Every, every, every episode would be like, should you go to the movie theater? No, because epidemic. But I got cut off during uh, a little th segment of Nerd Central I had last semester known as the DC Defender. I didn't get to a certain, a certain movie called Justice League. Oh man, and if I would have gotten to Justice League, I would have torn it to shreds. Yeah, that's right. There's a DC movie I don't like. You know why? Because it's not the movie that it's supposed to be. It's not the movie that its creator, Mr. Zack Snyder, set out to make. For those of you who don't know, there's a little movement called Release the Snyder Cut. <laughs> and it very recently succeeded, as you can see in the news of, uh, this episode of Nerd Central, <laughs> and it succeeded pretty pretty hard. It's gonna come out in four one-hour increments. Wow! Just imagine four hours of Justice League. That'd be awful, right? Except for no, it wouldn't. The whole reason that release of Snyder Cut was a movement in the first place 
is because after filming, everything was filmed. Zack Snyder had the movie done. He was just working on post-production at this time. After everything had been filmed, he, um, he decided to step down as director. Why? Because his daughter had recently committed suicide. I think that anybody could understand why he would need some time off from filmmaking because of that. Like, it's ridiculous if you give him any judgment whatsoever for something like that. So, WB, the great Warner Bros. themselves, decided they would bring in somebody who's experienced with superhero team-ups, of course, to uh, just, you know, finish it up. So they bring in Mr. Joss Whedon of the first Avengers and the second Avengers fame. He directed both of those films. One's okay. One's pretty trash, in my opinion. Um, the okay one being the first Avengers, the trash one being Age of Ultron. So... Joss Whedon, in his infinite wisdom, he comes in and he's like, where's the comedy, man? Why is this movie so serious and awesome? We need some comedy in here. He proceeds to write 80 pages of reshoots. Do you have any idea how much that changes the movie? Like, for reference, the typical screenplay is 120 pages. Joss Whedon wrote 80 pages of reshoots. That's, that's almost an entire movie. And it's, it shows, it really does. Because in the final product, not only did he trash all over this beautiful film, he weirdly color graded the things that he actually kept in from Sack's version and, and put it from a normal looking gray sky to this ugly red tint that he put on every character and everything involved. And it was disgusting. Every time I saw something like, oh, where's that from the trailer? Where's that from the trailer? Where's that and that and that from the trailer? You know why there's so much missing from the trailer aside from 80 pages of reshoots? Uh, that's because WB issued a mandate that the film had to be under two hours long. Now remember, the Snyder Cut which is coming out on HBO Max next year, is four hours long. WB, <laughs> cut the runtime of Justice League in half and rewrote, <laughs> I don't know, I think about maybe 15% of Zack's original scenes actually got into the film. But luckily, Zack Snyder has gone to Twitter and stated that he will burn the whole thing to the ground before he uses a single frame of Joss Whedon's footage. You know how I feel about Man of Steel. Man of Steel was a masterpiece that got me actually interested in the character of Superman, a character who had nothing to me because he was so perfect and had virtually zero flaws. Man of Steel made him a flawed character and made him appeal to me. Batman vs. Superman the most accurate Batman we've ever had on screen with Ben Affleck. His brutality, his angst, everything was perfect. And then we have Justice League. With the reshoots, Ben Affleck was in different levels of health and it was clear with every scene. Um, the Flash, who is my favorite character of all time, was a um, Spider-Man wannabe. And just, what did they do to Cyborg? Zack said over and over again, Cyborg is the heart of this film. And the actor of Cyborg wasn't happy with the conditions that he was working on either. So, hallelujah indeed. I keep saying hallelujah because the main trailer played hallelujah. Unfortunately, we can't play that song because copyright. Hallelujah indeed, the Snyder Cut, it's real. Everybody who told me that the Snyder Cut was was not real, that it was just something I made up in my head. Where are you at now? Because <laughs> it's real. The Snyder Cut is releasing. It's four hours long. It's going to be epic. The trailer already looks 90 times better than Justice League. Yeah, Justice League will be the name of that now. And I just can't wait, you know? 
I just cannot wait. Well, anyway, I've been the DC Defender. Hashtag release the Snyder Cut has ended because they're releasing the Snyder Cut. <laughs> Back to you, Krista. That's going to do it for us. Remember, you can find all previous episodes of Nerd Central on the KNWT YouTube page. Nerdmageddon is up next. And of course, we will see you on the next all new episode of Nerd Central.